Welcome to Historic Adventures on YouTube. Today, we're diving into the rich history of Conwy Castle. In the annals of history, the passage to the ancient castle was not always paved with modern conveniences. Across the road from the visitor center stands a bridge, a testament to contemporary engineering. Yet, it is a mere echo of the bygone era. In medieval times, the approach from the town was a direct and rugged path, a steep causeway ascending from what is now Castle Street to the very doorstep of the fortress. This thoroughfare led brave souls to confront a dry ditch, a moat guarding the outermost gate of the castle. Though time has weathered its grandeur, fragments of the original ramp remain, hinting at the arduous journey of those who sought entrance. At the precipice of the castle's defenses, a wooden drawbridge once swung into place, a marvel of medieval ingenuity. Beneath the modern pathway lies the remnants of this ancient mechanism, its axle nestled beneath the present decking, a silent witness to centuries past. Today's travelers, oblivious to the trials of their predecessors, pass under the shadow of the drawbridge's former site. They wind their way towards the gate, guided by a path that veers through a rough-hewn opening, carved into the stone walls that once repelled invaders. Yet, even as they approach, remnants of antiquity greet them the slots for the portcullis, the iron teeth that once barred entry, still visible on either side of the gateway. In this convergence of past and present, the modern bridge spans more than just a road. It bridges the chasm of time, connecting us to the storied past of this ancient stronghold. Behold the outer gate, once a threshold to the sky, now a relic of ages past. Here, where the portcullis once guarded the entrance, whispers of a bygone mechanism linger, perhaps housed within a modest hut perched above the arch. This humble structure, adorned with two diminutive turrets, served not as a bastion of defense, but as a perch for vigilant sentinels. As the path winds ever upwards, traversing the remnants of a doorway that once sealed the inner sanctum of the gate passage, it leads into a narrow enclosure, a barbican steeped in history. Here, beneath the imposing shadow of two colossal towers that stand sentinel at the western edge of the castle, lies a strategic vantage point. This barbican, with its stout walls and strategic positioning, was a formidable obstacle for any would-be assailant. Here, between the outer gate and the heart of the castle, attackers found themselves ensnared in a trap, held at bay by the fortress's formidable defenses. Even amidst times of peace, the formidable nature of the castle's defenses cast an imposing shadow upon any visitor. A sight to behold, most striking were the menacing projections known as murder holes or machicolations, extending boldly beyond the parapets of the main curtain wall flanked by the two towering bastions in the west. Supported by intricate, multi-tiered stone corbels, these architectural marvels provided a means for defenders, atop the wall, to rain down stones and projectiles upon any assailants daring to challenge the fortress below. Step into a realm frozen in time as we embark on a journey through the inner sanctum of the castle, delving into the intricacies of its courtyard and the majesty of its towers, each boasting meticulously reconstructed spiral staircases. With each edifice and tower beckoning exploration, let us unravel their tales one by one. The outer ward, the larger expanse of the castle's two wards, stands as a gateway to the heart of the fortress, its embrace more accessible to the bustling town below. Though now an expansive lawn, once it was a bustling thoroughfare, hemmed in by towering structures, some lost to the ravages of time. Despite its former confines, envision the outer ward as a hive of ceaseless activity, 
teeming with the castle's denizens' officers, soldiers, servants, and craftsmen interspersed with the bustling townsfolk of Aberconwy, for whom the castle served as the epicenter of governance and community. In stark contrast, nestled at the far reaches of the fortress lies the inner ward, a realm reserved for the elite royalty and the esteemed members of the royal household. The dichotomy of the wards at Conwy mirrors the grand design conceived for Cairnafon Castle, though the latter's vision remained unrealized. Yet, here at Conwy, the blueprint was brought to fruition, each building erected according to plan, offering a clarity of configuration unparalleled in the annals of medieval fortresses across Wales and England. In this symphony of stone and history, the castle stands not merely as a bastion of strength, but as a testament to the intricate tapestry of power, privilege, and community that once thrived within its formidable walls. Venture beyond the ancient causeway, where the middle gate beckons, guiding travelers through the cross wall into the eastern realm of the castle, the inner ward. It was within these storied confines between the years 1284 and 1286, that the master mason James of St. George, alongside the master carpenter Henry of Oxford and the esteemed engineer Richard of Chester, undertook a monumental task. Together, they fashioned a grand suite of apartments fit for the illustrious Edward I and his beloved queen, Eleanor of Castile, who passed away in 1290. The inner ward, a sanctuary reserved for the elite echelons of the royal household, housed not only opulent chambers for regal residence and ceremony, but also the essential infrastructure for daily life. Amidst the grandeur, one could find quarters for household officers and the bustling activity of service rooms dedicated to the storage and preparation of sustenance. Elevated on the first floor, the royal apartments encircled an open courtyard, the epitome of regal splendor. The eastern range boasted a grand chamber, while the southern expanse was divided into two distinct sections. Ascending from the courtyard, timber stairways ascended to two upper doors, one adjacent to the gate and the other positioned opposite. Guarding the periphery of the inner ward, stood three formidable corner towers, their secrets revealed through recent scholarship. Contrary to earlier beliefs, these towers predominantly housed service facilities rather than chambers reserved for the royal entourage. Ingeniously designed passages and stairways facilitated the discreet ingress and egress of servants, ensuring seamless attendance to the needs of the monarchs without disrupting their privacy. In the annals of history, the inner ward stands not merely as a testament to architectural prowess, but as a testament to the intricate dance of power and privilege that defined the medieval era. Amidst the architectural ensemble of the inner ward, one tower stands as a beacon of divine splendor, the Northeast Tower, affectionately known as the Chapel Tower. Here, Master James wrought a sanctuary fit for the royal household, a testament to both piety and architectural finesse, mirroring the chapel adjacent to the hall in the outer ward. Beneath the lofty heights of the chapel, the ground floor of the ranges hummed with the ceaseless activity of service rooms. Among these, the king's kitchen and the cavernous cellars bore witness to the meticulous orchestration of sustenance and provisions for the royal court. As the eye wanders beyond the towers of royal residence, it alights upon the Stockhouse Tower, a solitary sentinel with three levels of chambers, distinct from the orbit of the royal lodgings. Here, amidst its stout walls, secrets were whispered and intrigues unfurled in the secluded confines of its rooms. A curious addition to the inner ward 
A timber-framed structure, supported by sturdy stone footings, stood sentinel on the north side of the courtyard. Though not directly accessible from the rangers, conjecture swirls around its purpose. Some suggest it served as the granary referenced in records from 1343, a repository of sustenance awaiting the call of need. Beyond the confines of the inner sanctum, a hidden portal, the postern, beckoned, leading intrepid souls into the royal garden, nestled within the embrace of the East Barbican. Here, amidst verdant tranquility, the cares of courtly life were momentarily forgotten, as nature's embrace offered solace to weary souls. Moreover, a winding path descended towards the foreshore, where a humble dock awaited, a conduit for the ebb and flow of supplies and visitors alike. Thus, from the gentle lapping of waves to the solemnity of chapel hymns, every corner of the castle bore witness to the intricate tapestry of life within its ancient walls. Step into the hallowed sanctuary of the chapel, a haven of beauty and solemnity unrivaled within the castle's walls. Its allure has only deepened with time, especially since the meticulous restoration efforts of 1966, which saw the resurrection of the tower's roof and floors to their former glory. Within these sacred confines, the chapel played a pivotal role, serving as the spiritual heart of the inner ward, a sanctuary of tranquility, a counterpoint to the bustling activity of the outer ward. During royal sojourns, it bore witness to the solemn rites presided over by the traveling clerics of the royal household, offering a private enclave for worship and contemplation away from the prying eyes of courtly affairs. Here, amidst the flickering candlelight and the resonance of sacred hymns, echoes of centuries past reverberate, whispering tales of devotion and reverence. Within these hallowed walls, the timeless dance of faith and duty found its expression woven into the very fabric of the castle's storied legacy. As we step foot into the regal confines of the King Tower, myth and history intertwine, shrouding this corner in intrigue and speculation. Legend has long whispered of this tower as the sanctuary of Edward I's inner chambers. However, recent scrutiny of the structure, coupled with meticulous examination of repair records, paints a different portrait. It appears that this corner of the castle served a more pragmatic purpose, functioning as a backstage area, bustling with the activities of the royal household. Here, nestled within the tower, rooms were allocated to the most esteemed members of the household, with a kitchen adjoining at ground level in the southern range. Linked by a winding spiral staircase, these chambers were connected to the main apartments by narrow, dimly lit passages, more conducive to the comings and goings of servants and household officers than the monarchs themselves. The ground floor room adjacent to the kitchen likely played host to the treasurer or comptroller, overseeing the flow of goods in and out of the bustling culinary hub. Beneath this chamber, lay a mysterious basement, accessible only by ladder from within a potential vault for safeguarding the kingdom's treasures. Ascending to the first floor, one might envision the steward overseeing affairs from a room adorned with a grand two-light window, offering a commanding view of the entrance from the dock below. Despite its significance, the fireplace here bore simpler design than others found within the castle walls. Adjacent, a latrine nestled within the southern curtain wall, accessible via a short passage and antechamber, provided necessary comfort amidst the rigors of duty. At the tower's zenith, a chamber devoid of warmth awaited, perhaps reserved for the king's squires or pages' youthful attendants to the royal court, entrusted with the tasks befitting their station. Thus, within the king's tower, the intricate tapestry of power and privilege unfurls, offering glimpses into the inner workings of a medieval realm. Step into the past as we unveil the model of Conwy Castle, 
recreating its majestic appearance as it stood centuries ago. This intricate representation offers a glimpse into the grandeur and splendor of one of Wales's most iconic medieval fortresses. As you gaze upon the model, envision the imposing walls rising proudly from the rocky terrain, their stone facade a testament to the craftsmanship of medieval masons. Towers soar into the sky, each a sentinel watching over the surrounding landscape, their crenellated parapets poised for defense. At the heart of the model lies the inner ward, a bustling center of activity where knights once trained and nobles convened. Picture the great hall in its full glory, its vast interior illuminated by flickering torchlight, resonating with the sounds of feasting and revelry. Thank you for accompanying us on this captivating journey through the annals of Conwy Castle's history. We trust that you have found this exploration enlightening and enriching. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel for more captivating content. For further engagement and updates, be sure to check out our social media channels linked in the description. Until next time, May the echoes of Conway's storied past continue to inspire and captivate you. Farewell, and we look forward to seeing you on our next adventure.